Welcome to Bada Boo. It's Chris. Marvel has a problem. More specifically, the MCU has a problem. Hands down, the most successful film franchise of all time, with close to 30 billion in box office receipts. For the first time in its historic run, there seems to be blood in the water. Before we get into that, be sure to hit the like button and subscribe for more. Let's get into it. Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania just came out and sadly shrunk in quality relative to its predecessors. Which wasn't a surprise if you've watched anything Marvel since Endgame. Quantumania had the best opening in the Ant-Man franchise, yet it immediately tanked 72% in its second weekend, a record for a Marvel film. Spider-Man No Way Home, Wakanda Forever, and Werewolf by Night were high points. But when the highlight of Phase 4 was Meg the Stallion twerking with She-Hulk, you probably have to go back to the drawing board. I actually found that moment in a vacuum pretty cool. However, you pile that moment on top of MODOK, on top of Ralph Boner, and on top of whatever the Eternals was. Ant-Man and the Wasp, Quantumania, is a microcosm of a larger issue with the MCU. Problem Marvel Studios president Kevin Feige himself has acknowledged. He has said that going forward, the number of projects will begin to slow. Smart thing to say in an admission that, like George Lucas, Marvel went a little too far in a few places. I may have gone too far in a few places. The MCU is bigger than ever, yet the movies are smaller than ever, not in budget or scale. They've gotten smaller in that they don't mean anything. They don't mean anything to the characters in them, they don't mean anything to the larger universe, and they don't mean anything to the fans. In the last three years, Marvel has released three films that have critical ratings that look like they belong in the DCU. Movies like Quantumania and Multiverse of Madness promise large universe-shifting implications, yet at the end of these films, the MCU is largely unchanged. Quantumania essentially ended with Scott Lang in the same spot he was in the beginning of the movie, hanging with family since he didn't want to tell anyone about Kang. Multiverse of Madness had Wanda destroy one temple and go to one alternate universe with Strange, ending with him strolling down the street. Wait, did Multiverse of Madness and Quantumania have the same ending? That's another problem. It seems like all of these movies have the same template. They feel like those straight-to-video sequels to Disney classics that used to come out where if you never saw it, it wouldn't have an effect on the original because realistically, who cares? The beauty of the MCU as a brand and a franchise is they found a way to make all of their projects a sequel to the Avengers. A piece in a larger puzzle that makes everything required viewing. The magic has fizzled since Endgame with everything feeling directionless and hollow. Which leads to the Thanos-shaped hole in the middle of all this. The Ant-Man shrinking into Thanos' ass theory was a popular one because it was the only way fans could think Ant-Man could defeat a villain on the level of Thanos, but apparently all he needed was Darren and an army of super smart ants to defeat Kang. While we're on the topic of villains, can we talk about the fact that Marvel has gone Game 6 Clay Thompson when it comes to ruining villains? I don't think I can forgive them for Taskmaster and MODOK. Taskmaster, a cyborg, and MODOK, and an aspiring Avenger? Yeah, just pack it up on this whole multiverse saga. I bring that up because the whole buildup of these movies is to a villain who has already been killed twice. If everything matters, nothing matters. And if Marvel wants to avoid the fate of the Western, they are going to have to do some soul searching. What do you guys think? Am I just being an old head or has Marvel jumped the shark? Let us know in the comments below and don't forget to like and subscribe. Bada boom.